Is this still the Porsche sweet spot? Car experts perpetually want to declare which Porsche is the best real-world 911. They say the base Carrera needs more aggression, the GT3 needs to be less hard, they say the Turbo S has too much power, and it seems Porsche can hear all this because now they've given us a 911 which both adds and subtracts. This new GTS has added power and added sharpness, but has anything been taken away? And being a GT, can it compare with the daddy, the GT3, the blue GT3, which is parked just over there? Well, stay with me because I'm going to offer up five reasons why you may want to take this GTS rather than that GT3. And so, here's the five points. Wow. I said no to the Thunderbirds thing. Since it was first introduced in 2010, the GTS model has been the connoisseur's choice as the Porsche 911 daily driver. The new 2022 version sets out to continue this by being the greatest hits of all the best features available on the 992. Lowered suspension, chrono pack, a race tech GTS interior, it has the lot. Short of having a GT3 naturally aspirated engine I should mention of course. And I should also mention the GTS and the GT3 we have here today were both supplied by what is, in my experience, the connoisseur's choice of Porsche centers. That is, of course, Porsche Center Chester. And so the first reason why you might want to buy a new GTS instead of a new GT3 is not for any technical reason. It is simply because you can. You could walk into a Porsche center place your deposit for a new Porsche 911 GTS and at some point it will be delivered. Try the same buying process for a new GT3 and those nice people won't even mention to you the 300 or more requests they've already received from other keen buyers for their annual allocation of what is just four or five new GT3 cars. They'll just say to you, no. Next up it's number two and we're going to talk about noise and practicality and we're going to have to talk about comfort. The GT3 isn't about to edge ahead of the GTS on our list here then either, despite it being recently voted the world's best driver's car by a panel of expert judges. You see it's a car that also features high cabin noise coming mainly from its massive tyres, that race engine and soundproofing which has largely been binned. This noise factor is noticeably absent from the GTS. So speaking of sound levels I'm going to let my guest presenter Oliver tell you what he thinks. my grandson. So like he says the sound levels in this car are high but that's down to the big tyres and lack of soundproofing. Also GT3 suspension is not as compliant as that fitted to the GTS and with the optional scaffolding installed in the GT3 that fabled 911 Porsche practicality is only on offer to us today here in the GTS. Meanwhile, the GTS suspension and soundproofing is effective. Those Turbo S sourced adaptive dampers do a great job of connecting you with the surface while brushing aside most road imperfections. Road imperfections which are found on nearly all of our aging UK side roads. Not too bad. To be fair, it's a bit bumpy. So, should Oliver and his sister for that matter wish for accommodation in our GTS interior, he'll find two suitable seats right here. You'll also discover one can pack a whole holiday's worth of luggage into this 911 cabin. Next we're going to talk about money and this is number three. Okay, so with the GT3 having a new car list price of £135,700 plus options plus some tax, I think this car is a bargain. 
When you consider the amount of top-end motorsport tech it carries, after all that dry sump system is a 10 grand piece of kit and the titanium forged connecting rods another 10k and that's just two of the special oily bits, I actually don't see how they can make any money out of a new GT3. And this may hint at the GT3's real value and why in 2022 you would need to find an extra £100,000 above the list price to get into a used one, whereas the GTS with its less exotic engine requires just about £10,000 over its £114,000 base price to get yourself into a nice used example. You still with me? Brilliant. Okay, next up we're going to talk about choice. This is number four. Coupe, Cabriolet, Targa with two or four wheel drive up for grabs, except the super cool Targa GTS which is served up four wheel drive only. Your GTS comes in any body format you like with leather or race tech interior trimming available. These amazing 18 way seats. Yes, that's a yes please from me. Big sunroof, that's another big tick from me. Burmeister sound system, which is naughty but very nice. And there's a whole list of other luxuries on offer. Compare that with the GT3's lesser option list, some of which are best avoided. For example, should you dare to fit these comfort seats in a GT3, you will not only be vilified by the aficionados, you'll likely harm your car's resale potential. And on checking the GTS option list, it's interesting to note they have a lightweight package available that removes the rear seats, bins some of that soundproofing, adds carbon bucket seats, all of which is aimed at saving 25 kilograms. Personally, I think taking this option would lessen the GTS's appeal. So with the GT3, it is coupe, coupe or coupe. There's not even a sunroof. Okay, you can get the touring, which is a GT3, of course, without the wing, but why not just get the ordinary GT3? You can take the wing off if you wish. Yeah, but saying that, this car does this. Oh. <laughs> GTS doesn't do that. Yes, it's very obvious the GT3 is in the next league above the GTS where driving dynamics and engagement and sheer emotional excitement are being measured. It is the stock Carrera S that is the closer relative to our black car, but I think we already knew this, didn't we? And so, why don't we bring our GTS back into play here with point number five. Okay, so that was one, two, three, and four, and now this is the one I wanted to tell you the most about, and it is all about the GTS's reason for being. Number five. Let's go. And it's to say the 992 GTS is the most complete, all-round performing, high-end sports car you're ever likely to come across. All-round and practical and calm in a way the albeit more dynamic GT3 can't be. Our GTS is not just comfortable, it is unrelentingly fast when you push it, offering seemingly limitless grip and makes even average drivers feel heroic on fast twisting roads. It also makes a fantastic flat six bellowing noise when pushed hard. It is sharp, it communicates directly with your synapses and on the right road it serves up so much next level handling and enjoyment you'll want to take it out for no other reason and to revel in the satisfaction that it offers. There's a reason that the 911 occupies its top spot in the Pantheon as the archetypal sports car and the latest generation GTS only justifies this further. They say nothing is perfect, but there's a valid argument that says the 992 GTS gets mighty close. With its combination of a focused driving experience served up at the same time as a perfectly reasonable level of everyday comfort, including a cabin you'd happily spend hours in, this GTS really is a complete package. 
Can this be an alternative to the GT3? Well, the GTS can't come close to the blue cars level of raw, loud excitement. However, the GTS is a justifiable uplift from the already sublime Carrera S, which therefore makes the 992 GTS the world's greatest all-round competent sports car anyone could ever need. So, I hope you've liked this video. If you have, feel free to click the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and please leave me a comment. I read every single one and I'll reply to most. And if you click this little notification bell, you'll know when I've uploaded the next video.